In this video, I'll explain why teaching students to move the decimal point is a really bad idea, and I'll suggest five different resources that you can use to make the process of multiplying and dividing by powers of 10 really simple and easy to understand for your students. G'day, I'm Dr. Peter Price of Professor Pete's Classroom, and welcome to another Teaching Tips video. Decimal points don't move. When we multiply a digit in a number by 10, it moves into a new place. We retain the same digit. This is the beauty of using 10, of course. If you multiply a number like 35 by 10, you end up with 35 tens, or you get the three and the five, but they're in new places. So the three tens effectively moves to the three hundreds. The five ones moves into the five tens. We put a zero to hold the ones place, and there's our answer. That is accurate. That is actually what's happening. When we say move the decimal point, we're confusing students by explaining something that never really happens. It looks like the decimal point's moved. We can do it visually and symbolically, but it doesn't make any sense in the world of numbers or in the real world. So what can we use as an alternative? I'm going to suggest five different materials that you can use for this sort of lesson using materials that are easy to get a hold of and make explaining what happens when we multiply or divide by a power of 10 so much easier for our students. So here's the first method. It requires no complicated materials. It's simply using the whiteboard. We're going to draw columns. We'll label the columns with the names of the places. We'll put a decimal point because we're going to need that when we use any number that has a decimal component to it. Write the digit. So let's say we're going to use that 6,500 question. If this is millimetres, we're converting it into metres. Metres are a larger unit, so the numbers become smaller by three places because it's a thousand millimetres in a metre. So we move all the digits this way, three places. So the six will go from the thousands, hundreds, tens, ones. We'll write the six here. Put the decimal point. The five will move three places as well. It'll end up in the tenths column. We could write the two zeros, but we don't need to. There's our answer. So you can see it shows everything that's going on in a way that students should understand. They can see why it's doing that and everything moves in the correct direction. So if we're making things smaller, they all move to the right. If we're making a number bigger, we're going to move everything to the left. So here's suggestion number two. This is a resource that we've created ourselves called an easy place value slide. Looks like this when it's complete. It's simply two pieces of paper. This one has a fold and we have digits written on it, the this, this strip of paper and we can move it left and right. Let's say we started with 27.5. There it is. And we're multiplying by, let's say, a thousand. So we just move this three places. One, two, three. Obviously we have to write another zero in here to hold the ones place. And we can see the result, 27,500. And we could reuse this, of course, for lots of other numbers. We can say, let's take the 27,500 and divide it by 100. So move everything two places to the right because it's getting smaller. There's our answer, 275 and so on. The next material I'm going to suggest is a, another place value slide. This one's a little more substantial than the first one. It's a little bit harder to make, but when you've made it, it should last you a long time. With this version that I've made here with a laminator, I've laminated everything, but on the back I've put strips of the laminated plastic after it's been through the machine, just some cutoffs, and just simply sticky tape those to the back so that this slides. And there again, we've got something that we can move the strip quite easily to show what happens to the digits and you can see them moving between the windows um, left and right as uh, required. That place value slide is available for you to download for free from our website at profpeat.com. You'll see the link below the uh, video in the notes so you can uh, go and access that if you wish. The next material you can use is a simple PowerPoint slide, or I'm sure it would work in Keynote. Because you can animate elements on the screen, you can produce something like this with a fair bit of time, I must say. But once you understand how to use PowerPoint, it's not that difficult. And you can show the digits sliding and moving left and right um, for a specific example. The fifth and final resource that I recommend for teaching students what happens when we multiply by powers of 10 is a virtual or on-screen number slide such as this one on our website at Professor Pete's Gadgets, uh, simply called Gadgets Number Slide. 
This has a number of resources to support the use of the gadget, including lesson ideas and other resources you can use with students, as well as a short video walkthrough. Um, but you can expand the gadget to fill the screen like so. This will work on almost any computer, any platform, tablets, even an iPhone, although things get rather small there. You just basically need access to the internet. So this is it. The main part of the screen is devoted, of course, to the slide itself. It shows places, as you can see, from millions all the way down to thousandths. You can switch the decimals off if your students are not ready for those yet, but I'll leave them on for now. Then we've got multiplying and dividing buttons and numbers that are powers of 10 that we can apply those operations with. And then a keypad. So we've designed it so that you, uh, you don't need to use a keyboard. Um, so you can use this on an interactive whiteboard or a tablet or any other touch device. So I'll click OK and the number appears. So now we can multiply this by 10. The digits move to the left by one place just as they should. And we've got 372 and 5 tenths. We can move it further. The thousands marker appears and the uh, zero to hold the place for the ones. You can see now that the thousand is grayed out because there's only two more places left. So if I multiply that by 10, there's only one more place left. We can get all the way to three million. Let's divide by a thousand. And you can see the trailing zeros are removed as well. So we decided those were better not shown and we can continue to divide and everything just moves as it should. Uh, when you get down to the end, as digits move off the screen, if necessary, they'll round. So you can see that's rounded to four thousandths, which is correct to the nearest thousandths. How do you teach multiplying and dividing by powers of 10? I'd love to hear from you. Please do leave a comment below the video. Uh, you may disagree with what I've said, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you'd like to access free resources from our website, including this one, there's a link below the video, as I said before, where you can click and get access to a number of free resources for teaching K through six math. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, do subscribe. Again, there's a button below the video or next to the video. Please subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications when new videos are released. That's it from this video. I look forward to talking to you again very, very soon.